Ah, good day. Uh, tonight I'm going to, I'm going to uh, have a go at a painting of um, Ruapehu. We took a trip um, up to Auckland uh, to pick up um, a cutter for mat board for um, mounting paintings on, um, which I bought from a, an elderly and rather frail gentleman um, up in one of the bays, I can't remember what it was, Browns Bay or something, um, who had a, uh, a framing business there but seemed to be um, giving up on it, I think. Um, and uh, we drove up on a uh, brilliant winter's day, absolutely gorgeous weather, um, and you could see for you could see forever. And uh, we did what we'd been promising ourselves we would do for years, which was we took a a slow trip up, going along back roads, um, and uh, taking occasional photographs. And I'm extremely glad that we did, because um, that brilliant winter weather uh, turned into winter weather when we were coming coming back again, and you couldn't see a darn thing. There, was, there were no mountains to be seen. There was no scenery. It was all bleak and cloudy. Um, so we'd taken our chance on the weather, or we'd taken advantage of the weather um, that first time, and um, it was uh, it was the right decision. So we got lots of. Uh, Nice pictures of hills and trees and um, just generally pleasant stuff. Put that a bit too far to the left. Kind of jumbled area in there. Which, um, well, maybe I'll wait until I'm um, actually painting it before I start messing around with trying to get that jumbled area right. There's a ridge in these foreground hills and various um, ups and downs which are probably not as important as the well, definitely not as important as the um, the mountains that everyone recognises or that I hope everyone recognises. Um, so we'll do all of that stuff and now I think we'll move on to dealing with the sky. So the application of some paint. Might also be time for the um, for the wetting of the paintbrush which is full of hardened paint from the last painting I did or the painting before or something. So let's just 
wet, as you can see that it's um, not behaving like a, uh, a paintbrush ought to behave. Which, you, know, you want the, the bristles to be nice and soft like that one is. Um, to pick up the water and come to a nice point. So let's just spend a little bit of time trying to condition that. If the brush is too hard, you can actually scratch the paper with it. Um, if the paint is too dry in the brush. Which can be annoying. <laughs> Beautiful, um, evenly gradated sky with these big scratch marks in the middle of it. So let's hope that we don't do that. I mean, it should be wet enough by now. Um, Ooh, a bit of gunge there. All that gunges. So bits of blue sky showing through. Bits of, uh, bits of cloud. Generally, um, generally horizontal, cloudy skies. So, um, that'll do for cloudy skies, and let's see if we can put a bit of shadow into those clouds. Busily trying to become as non horizontal as they can. Um, let's just try and dampen that area, probably too far too much. But Um, but uh, clouds are uh, water and the um, effects of water on paint. Um, often produce no probably leave that piece of rubbish there but let's get rid of it um, so the effects of, of the water on the paint often produce quite effective looking clouds um, on the sort of kind of lost some of the structure that I thought I had there uh, a moment ago. And I can put some back again. Let's see what happens when the uh, the water dries. don't really want that cloud sitting just off the edge of the, the mountain there, so bring the cloud up to the mountain. And similarly here, um, it's very easy to produce halos where the cloud cover um, has been painted around the outside of the of the hills, and you don't really want that at all. You can also 
get quite a lot of structure into clouds with uh, um, a towel that's fairly um, fairly flat material, not not much of a, a nap to it, and it, you get the uh, edges of places where it curves. All right, I think I'm going to leave that. Um, now we've got to uh, do the uh, foreground um, hills. I suppose they're really mid-ground hills. There's nothing very much in the foreground here. There's a bit of bush on the right-hand side, which I might or might not add at some stage. I don't know. Um, but uh, let's let's just add the the hills. So they follow this line and there's not a lot of variation in the colour of these hills. I don't know whether I'll try one. I am just at the moment adding some colour variation. Really, they're just a um, a foil for the uh, uh, the mountains at, at the background. So let's um, darken some of those areas. So, as I said, there's a, a ridge going along here. Um, And there's uh, some steep slope there, and there's a, another valley in behind there, and something in behind there as well. I was planning to do this, this with a credit card, but I seem to be um, working with uh, the, the brush at the moment. And whether or not that will continue, I don't know. Um, oh, so we wanted to find the top of a hill there. Uh, so the, the shadow in the background is defining the top of this hill and that also has some structure to it which defines a bit of um, a slope here which I need to tie in with the top of that ridge I think and a bit more in that sort of region there. Um, take that down to the edge of the paper so that it's not suddenly stopping before the edge for no obvious reason. Um, and having carefully delineated the edge of that ridge there I might as well actually Paint it in. And there's something there, something there, which goes pretty close to that edge. Just enough so you can see it. And then mm, darkness in here somewhere. It again comes down just missing the um, top of the the ridge that we're looking at, as it were. Doesn't make much sense, did it? Um, missing the top of the, the near closer ridge. So the, the dark areas in the hills behind delimit the uh, edges of these hills. So if these hills happen to have dark on them, it's just that edge that shows where they start and stop. One hill starts and another one stops now. Given that the mountains are the main focus, we want them to contrast with something, so we want to have dark hills near them. Um, 
see if we can darken that. Mm, not enough dark paint. So I want to try and darken in there. So there's a, a valley there. Um, and also I think in here. Again, just to uh, get some contrast with the, the mountains behind. So let's see if we can put some structure in from place to place. Um, some paint in there that we can then scrape away at. Yeah. Darn. Yeah. And similarly, perhaps not quite so forthright, but uh, do something similar up here. Um, bit of structure there. And uh, over here now. There to be a valley in here. And there's bits coming down from both sides, as it were. Sort of interleaved. This little wiggly bit in the middle. I always think a painting should have a wiggly bit in the middle. Um, and let's. Do some more down there. You know what they say about uh, watercolour, don't you? That you can't get back the lights. Well, this credit card allows you to do exactly that. You know, get back to white paper, but um, you, well, I mean, that's what you're doing, actually. You are getting back to white paper, it's just not all the way to white, but it is. Uh, the colour of the the lightness of the paper showing through. <coughs> oh, or should we do that? Make that all dark in there. And uh, oh. uh, Actually, doing anything useful at all, am I? Anyway, that's probably helped a bit, I think. Shall I try and put some structure in there? There's no nothing actually in, in reality, but um, it feels as though it needs some variation. And uh, 
be something in here too. So sometimes complexity is uh, a, uh, a contributor to the um, to the composition, and sometimes simplicity. I mean, last night's painting was at the um, extreme end of simple. And this seems to be really benefiting from adding a bit of complexity to it. So, um, and let's put something in down here again as well, I think. So that's not uh, that's not true to the original image, but at least at the moment, I rather like it. And uh, I think I will turn the camera off and turn it on again because we're running out of our 25 minute time limit, or whatever it is, 30 minute time limit. I've only got five minutes to go, so I'll turn you off, turn you on again. Right, so we're back again. Um, I've, uh, I've dried the hills and I've dried the sky, which was still just a tad damp. And I might just take away some of this line that's taking one's eye out of the picture. I just noticed that it was doing that. And so let's try and you know, find some dark paint that we can use to... Well, let's just use the, the paintbrush, it probably doesn't matter. Um, anyway, let's, let's um, take that uh, distraction away. Now, um, we turn our attention to the, uh, the mountains. So the mountains are uh, reflecting the sky because of course there's snow, they're white, they're reflecting the colour they can see. So we've put in um, a light wash of blue. If you're assuming I can make a light wash of blue. Try and dilute the paint that's in this brush because that of course is what we were using for the sky so if we are reflecting the sky we presumably want that colour don't we? Does that make sense? Oh, and there's a, a little bit of hill in here on the whoops a little bit of hill on the on the right hand side that uh, I want to um, to darken at some stage or to paint in at some stage so I'll well, I suppose it matters very much actually if it, if it gets this blue colour on it because of course it's going to be. Um, I've got this tendency to, to try and avoid. Oh, it. Um, that colour got on my finger. Um, I, what was I trying to say? I've got a tendency to try and avoid um, painting into um, lower areas that are going to be dark. And there's no need to because the dark paint covers over the light paint. Um, so you, know, you can paint over with uh, a light colour, and then come on, and then uh, paint over with dark um, shortly thereafter. usually get my uh, broad brush to um, go into these little sharp corners, but for some reason or other it's not wanting to today. That's why I'm using the, the paint mover to achieve the same goal. Oh, I actually shouldn't go there, never mind. Um, that's going a little bit better now.
and um, As I said, I, I shouldn't care about the fact that I'm going over that hill. All right, so that um, gives us our blue colour, which is rather darker than we want. So let's... Um, he puts the paint on and he takes the paint off. Ooh, that's rather an interesting effect at the top there. Um, so it doesn't matter if uh, there's a bit of um, variation there. In fact, it's rather, really rather nice. Um, so now uh, we need to uh, to add the areas that are in shadow. So these are the areas that are being illuminated, and they're picking up um, the colour of the sky. And uh, now we want to see if I can find a a good brush for doing this. On these sable brushes. Is the sable? Yes. Um, so it's just a case of uh, adding paint to the areas that are dark, that are in shadow. Child's colouring in phase of the uh, the painting. And there's not a lot of not a lot of variation in this colour. Um, a little bit. down here. It's, I suppose the uh, the light's coming from here and it's not clear whether, not so clear where the areas that are being uh, illuminated are on this side of the on this side of the mountain. The light's striking at a more um, glancing angle. And there's this area which um, I think I said was jumbled when I was uh, originally um, sketching out the shapes. And I said, oh, I'll leave it till later. Well, later's now. Um, so, oh, I'm still putting it, putting it off by doing the tops of the hills. I'll get to the Jumbled area in a minute, it's just down here. Um, that's very dark in there. Doesn't look as though it ought to be, but it is. So we'll let's, uh, even here there's a a certain amount of shadow which I'll indicate by um, adding paint and then taking it away again. So that's dark, and this is quite a lot darker. And there. I'm, gonna get it. I'm still putting off doing this area down here, the, the jumbled area, and, uh, and I think we're going to cheat a little bit when we're doing this because unless you're a mountaineer trying to plan a route up the, uh, the mountain the exact nature of this doesn't really matter, so I'll jumble it by using the the towel to um, uh, 
make some areas darker than others. All right, back to uh, something that's fairly clear, in a clear area, in fact, quite a large area this time of essentially all the same darkness. One of the things about the human visual system seems to be that we distinguish between um, areas with different lightnesses, sorry, between light areas that have different um, lightnesses or darkness, depending on, well, different values, that's the, use the technical term. We distinguish between light areas that have different values um, quite efficiently, but um, dark areas, we tend to sort of clump them together. Uh, and if you um, enhance the uh, the contrast in a in a dark area of a photograph, you often find there's a lot more detail than you're aware of. Um, uh, at first glance. This goes over to there, and it doesn't have quite so much of that colour in it. There was a funny coloured cloud overhead, wasn't there? So it's filtering the light. I think I picked up some red, didn't I? No brush. So that's all fairly solid. And then there's a, an edgy bit down there. It's just catching the shadow, as it were, as opposed to catching the light. Um, jumbled um, bits in there. Oh, there's quite a lot of shadow in there that I haven't um, painted. So there's a whole, whole heap of stuff that's in shadow up around here. Just little bits that are catching the light around that area. Hmm. I've had let that dry just a little bit too much. I have a little blend. Okay, um, try and darken some of this down here because it's quite dark. And fill in again some of these. Um, Areas that have got no paint on them because they're not um, getting direct sunlight. So. So there's a bit more of shadow in this area. And quite dark, hard-edged 
shaded area up there. And I think we might leave the mountains about now, which is code for saying I'll spend some time looking at them and seeing if there's anything else I need to do to them. Uh, just a little bit there. There's a curved line there which I haven't really oh, picked up on. Um, and there's a bit of dark hill over here that uh, I'll just add in something behind these foreground hills and in front of the mountain. I don't really know whether it um, is of benefit to the composition. I suspect maybe it's not. So let's um, I think let's blue it a bit uh, and um, then lift out some colour which might um, might move it into the distance a little bit. the right sort of effect. Leave it at that I think. Just try to uh, take it out of the uh, out of the attention. So all right. Um, time to uh, Time to have a look at it and see what I think. So I'll come back to you. Ooh, yuck, it's all covered in gunge. Um, I'll come back to you uh, if I think that it needs um, something doing to it. Hopefully without spilling all this paint all over the floor. All right, see you shortly. Well, welcome back. Uh, I've been sitting and looking at this view for a while and I think it's very difficult to appreciate um, through the camera but from a distance the distinction between the hills and the, the mountains in the background is not um, not quite as clear as you might imagine. So um, I feel as though I need to, to darken these hills and my experience with <laughs> with adding a, a wash over a large area is that you deaden the painting. So I think I'm going to just try and um, work on so it's maybe this, this section here which is, is quite quite light, lighter than the, the paint in the foreground. So I think I might just try to um, apply some blue over that and see how it goes. Let's just take um, a risk. So yeah, you see how the uh, the definition of those shapes is gone to some extent, but um, what I'm hoping 
And there's a little bit of colour there, which I think is quite nice. A little bit of lightness, which uh, just takes the attention away from the hills a bit. Um, so we'll try, because of course when I try this it'll probably go a bit lighter. Uh, we'll try that and see what it looks like. Watercolour painting, well I suppose any painting is anyway, um, is uh, a matter of uh, trying to um, deal with problems. Um, problem solving is the phrase of of the decade, isn't it? Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a case of trying to, to work out what the problem is and trying to uh, to find a way of fixing it. So let's dry this and see what we think. I wonder if that might have solved the problem. I'm going to do my um, putting it at the end of the room and uh, having a look at it again. And again I'll get back to you uh, when I've had a chance to uh, to think about it for a while. Okay, that's helped. Um, so we've got a fairly dark area here. There's a certain amount of detail in these hills that's, well, it's not lost, but it's been uh, muted, um, uh, which, I mean, I guess I was afraid of, but I think that that's um, subsidiary to the main effect of, of dark hills here and um, the lighter part of the, the mountains up there. And I've identified, I think, another problem, which is that this piece of cloud up here is uh, kind of obscuring the edge of the mountain. So I'm going to try lifting some of the paint out from that area, um, which may or may not work. It's very um, dubious as to whether or not that I might just dampen the whole of that area so that we ended up with a hard edge, but then try to lift. So I'm just agitating the surface of the paper very gently with a fairly soft brush. Um, preparatory to uh, Applying the towel over the area. Now has that given us something more of an edge? Maybe I'll put some paint in along the edge of the mountain. as blue as that, but just try to um, define the, the edge and of course having um, long since lost the uh, puddle of paint that I was using to to apply here. I'm having to try and blend um, in with what's already there so that the colours don't clash too much. So we'll see um, That's going to do it and dry it before it starts spreading everywhere. I think that's helped a bit. And uh, to try and do much the same thing at the other side. Again, um, there's a splodge of paint that I added there with my my dirty finger. I don't know where that paint came from. But, uh, I don't really want that to be there, so again we'll um, just wet the general area and then try and lift the paint. You can never get rid of it all, but uh, you can hopefully make enough of a difference so that there is no longer 
um, an ambiguity about where the uh, distinction is between the mountain and the sky because I want this and sometimes you use lost and found edges where you deliberately um, make it difficult to tell where one thing starts and the other thing finishes but here I want the the mountain to be a distinct entity. Right again from close up it doesn't look too bad but I'll have a look at it from from a distance. Wish me luck <laughs> as you wave me goodbye. Yeah that seems to have done the trick. Try again. Yeah that seems to have done the trick. Uh, particularly the uh, clarity of the, the mountain on the left hand side there which is no longer geologically accurate. The mountain actually goes down considerably lower but oh well, we've um, changed a bit uh, and this is not quite so important but we seem to have uh, achieve the clarity that I need for the, um, the distinction between these three large areas of the painting. All right, so thank you for your company and uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.